So I've been getting some questions about hyperpigmentation and kojic acid. You can use kojic acid like one to two times a day as tolerated. It works because it chelates copper, which is necessary for tyrosinase. The main drawback with kojic acid is that a lot of people find that it's irritating. But a lot of products aimed at dark spots, you know, they combine multiple different ingredients and ideally they balance them in a formula that's moisturizing and non-irritating. Man, my sleep this summer, I owe to that Sleeping Glow blanket with the vents in it. It keeps you from getting too hot in the night. Yeah, it's been getting really hot. I have both of the fans going in my bedroom, plus the AC, which I try, I turn it down, the AC, the temperature of the AC down at night so it's cooler. But man, the bill for the air conditioning gets high in the summer. So I try and, you know, dial it in just right if you get my drift like during the day i run it in the 70s coming in with the sun by me beta panthenol repair toner uh i finished up my timeless coq10 serum i need to replace it but i want to finish this it's pretty good in comparison to the coenzyme q10 serum this is a lot thinner so i got a new pair of shorts on the amazonian for like workout purposes they're by the brand Belief, which I have purchased a lot from this brand over the years and it's pretty good quality. I usually get their like UPF tops, but these little shorts, they have built in like bike shorts and there's a little pocket right here. So it's really good for running. And you know, like you can put your key there. I don't know if you could fit a, you could probably fit a phone in there, although I think that'd be feel kind of weird. There's a pocket on both sides. Yeah. and. This is the waistband. It's like a nice elastic, pretty comfortable. No drawstring. Yeah, I get a little annoyed with drawstrings, but like sometimes they weasel their way out in the washing machine, or like it, if it comes untied, then you know it's flapping around. It's slightly embarrassing too if you like have to retie it in public. It's just like, what are you doing? All right, coming in with my dermatology universal tint. Alright you guys, this morning we're trying out a new coffee, Black and Bold. I got this on iHerb because sadly they no longer carry Raven's Brew. I have one more bag. Yeah, I have one more bag in my stash that I'm hoarding of Wicked Wolf. Oh, so good. I went on their website. I might just order directly from the website. It's got a nice pull tab, which is nice to see. Since, ever since the pandemic and shortages, the adhesive on coffee bags is so tenacious. Mmm, now it really does have a caramel and nutty aroma to it. Definitely not a shiny bean, it is a medium roast. So I have this coffee clip scoop that, this is by Bialetti, but you can get these on Amazon. I have another one from Amazon as a matter of fact. And I do five scoops of beans. Sealer on in, nice and tight. This grinder is a lot louder than you guys are hearing because I lowered the volume on those clips so I don't blast your eardrums. We'll give the initial drizzle a stir. Make sure all the grounds are, are wet. This is like the little love slurry here. And then we'll pour the rest in and I let it incubate for six minutes. The top looks beautiful. Finished unloading my dishwasher. This plunger. Smells good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Cleaning out my makeup brushes. This little gadget, I love. I clean them once a week and it works really well. I've been using this for about a year now, cleaning my brushes once a week, and it really gets them good and clean, uh, but keeps them in good shape. So I just put a few drops of this Eco Tools brush cleaner in there. Always fun to see the dirty water come out. <laughs> now when it comes to these botanic ingredients for targeting hyperpigmentation, like kojic acid, arbutin, Everyone will always want to know, like, what's the best one? How does this compare to this one? How does it compare to that one? And really, truthfully, we have very little research comparing these different ingredients in like a clinical fashion. Like, 
in randomized double blinded placebo controlled trials to really show which is superior and by and large the route to get good control is using multiple ingredients to target different aspects um, that's not to say that like one ingredient by itself couldn't be offering some benefit for certain types of hyperpigmentation but like there's just not you know these are cosmetic ingredients you're gonna get a lot of variability just like with any other cosmetic ingredient there's there's tremendous variability it's so unfair that acne is a disease but post acne hyperpigmentation and redness in the eyes of insurance is cosmetic anyway i'm headed over to dick's sporting goods because i want to see if they got anything new from that Calia line which I really love. I've been loving that little romper that I got there uh, a like a month ago. This is a good deal on these running shorts, two for 35. They have the built-in underwear. These are cute. They have lots of different patterns. I like these. These look comfortable. They're soft too. I'm back here in the golf section and they actually have some cute UPF tops like this one looks like it'd be very comfortable it's like super cool i've never heard of this brand lady hagen upf 50 cooling yeah it's like very cool on the skin and they have this cute one with the little golf clubs i don't play golf but that's cute i like the blue one too it's pretty and then this that looks like it would attract a lot of heat but otherwise it's cute they don't have the hand covers then isn't this dress cute? It's got the little collar. These look comfortable. By Nike. What do we have back here? Those are kind of cute. $58. Whew, it's pricey but the material is really nice. That's vibrant. UPF 50. Oh, I like this. Although, is it kind of cropped topped? I'm not sure. They also have hats, like my San Diego hat company one. But, these are $45 by Callaway. They're really nice because you can adjust and you can have your bun out the top. These look comfortable. This little golf skirt's really adorable too. I just love this little skirt. It's got built-in shorts but it's like really comfortable. And it's got little pockets here, but these little tops are by that Calia brand. And they have this cute little ruffle on the sleeve. Yeah, I like this orange color. Yeah, these are so comfortable. I think I'm gonna get them, the skirt, because like you can, even work out in it if you wanted to, but it's like really comfortable. Okay, this top I really like. There's no like buttons or anything to deal with. It's really nice fabric. It's that same Calia brand. This is the UPF top. It's cute too. <laughs> this is that brand that I'd never heard of. Um, Tail, Tail Active. It's really comfortable. You could wear something underneath it. I love the collar too. That's like a really nice detail. Like it sits right there on your neck. It's got like the little cutout almost. This one's also really cute. It's got like the mesh here. And it's also like really that same breathable material. You can adjust the zipper. But at Dick's, I did get that adorable skirt. Uh, it was just too, too cute to pass up. I was kind of wanting to get another one. Get They had one in like a navy color. I just felt like they would be really versatile. And 
happened, but I didn't. I'm gonna wait for it to go on sale. But in the meantime, I'll get a lot of use out of the one that I got. I did not get the UPF tops, but I got the Calia tops. I think I'm gonna head on over to Big Lots to see if they got any more of those candles in. Okay, I came over here to Big Lots. Here lies salt, here lies pepper. How adorable. These little faux succulents. This of candy corn pillow. Here's the pumpkin to my pie. <laughs> yeah, here's the Dr. Teal's melatonin lavender thing I was talking about yesterday. Look, you guys. Remember that Jurassic Park makeup palette that I showed in my Walmart Shop With Me video? They also have a lip balm here, apple flavored. Why is it Jurassic World now and not Jurassic Park? I'm so out of it, you guys. It's not even funny. <laughs> like, who is this weird little baby? Coco Melon? Is that the name of the child? Uh, this I know. Hershey Kiss. <gasps> little avocado lip gloss? He's cute. Pepperoni pizza? Does it actually taste like pizza? Oh, look. A little latte. Or cold brew, excuse me. Do not worry, be happy. I showed you guys yesterday, what was it? Hershey's Kiss. Wasn't it Reese's lip gloss with a keychain holding it? Oh, here's a Mountain Dew one. Interesante. Ooh, they brought out the straw bales. And a skeleton, LED posable skeleton. Animated eyes, oh, that's creepy. <laughs> Sweet little autumnal kitchen towels. These were here last time. Ah, these are the good candles. Um, I do, I really like this pumpkin brown butter. I may get another one. Maple praline pie is new though. Mm, that is not good. It does not smell like maple, nor does it smell like praline. Apple pumpkin fritter. Hmm, that's nice. I have Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. Zero. He's cute. I like this. His eyes light up. And they have these inflatables. Ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like like really creepy Halloween decorations. I mean, it's fun if you're going to like a haunted house, but I don't want to look at that all the time. How are these though? Rest in peace. That's actually kind of nice. Come in for a spell. That's cute. Mm, no. Reminds me of something I smelled in middle school. <laughs> so I ended up running into Kroger and picking up this candlelight candle, Apple Cinnamon Crisp. It actually smells really good. Candlelight, hit or miss. Definitely no Tuscany candle. So I mentioned that I kind of want to have pops of lemon in my kitchen because I eat off of this plate all the time. Well, I went down the rabbit hole on Amazon because Kate Spade has an Amazon storefront and there's actually a ton of cute stuff in there, including this recipe box, which I've been wanting a box for recipe cards for the longest time. They also have a recipe book where you can write the recipes in the book and there's a section in the book where they're like uh, little envelopes where you can put cards, recipe cards too. I wanted that, but they didn't have any more in stock of the lemon pattern, so I got the box. It's really nice though because it comes with cards. Aren't they pretty? Like the little tabs, breakfast, soup, sauces, but I love the way the cards are laid out because you can write the recipe, how long it takes, to prep, how many servings, the directions. I just think these would make a really nice gift for someone. Isn't it pretty? So I have that here in my kitchen. I need to put this away. This is a little bento box that I use to take snacks and um, food on the go. Well, hey guys, just hopped out of the shower. Now today I filmed the video for you guys. It should be up at this point a little refresher, if you will, on dark elbows and knees. And one of the major driving factors for discoloration, darkness on the elbows and knees is just the chronic friction and pressure. 
basically the chronic friction and pressure, it leads to a few things. Thickening of the skin, plus the pressure causes fluid accumulation, swelling on a small, tiny level, leakage of fluid into the surrounding skin, including leakage of blood cells that break apart and leave this kind of rusty, brownish, goldenish, almost discoloration that melded together with the thickening of the skin leads to the appearance of dark, discolored elbows and knees. And everyone has some degree of it. It's not abnormal. It's, it's, it's perfectly normal. But the skin there, right over, right over the bone, is pretty, you know, it's pretty thin skin. So it's just more vulnerable. All I have to say, like being really mindful of the pressure that you put on those areas can help. Like if you kneel a lot, get yourself like a cushion, knee pads, um, and try and get, you know, like if you <clears throat> lean on a particular table a lot, see if you can't get like some kind of a cushion, like you know those mouse pads that they have that are made out of like gel foam, so that you like lean on that, a little less pain, a little less pressure there, as opposed to just the straight up you know, hard marble or whatever, and that can definitely help. But once the skin becomes thickened from chronic rubbing, um, you have to stop the rubbing behavior, which is kind of hard, again, because just the nature of that area. But um, moisturizers can help lubricate the skin, and then that thickened stuff can improve with the consistent use of like urea or alpha hydroxy acids, because they deeply hydrate, and then they allow for that stuff to smooth out and just brighten skin over the knees and elbows. Anywhere where there's a lot of friction on the skin, you can get um, you know, discoloration. It's not all necessarily melanin pigment. Some of it's hemosiderin, some of it's acanthosis skin, which is you know a histologic term for thickening of the epidermis. Um, for example, like people who have um, a lot of friction under the arms from rubbing, the sweat breaks down the skin barrier and then it kind of cover, it's irritating, inflammatory, they can develop um, hyperpigmentation on the arms. But some of that, the darkness under the arms, some of that is just, you know, natural, the, you know, the way the, the natural pigmentary lines are. Same thing with hyperpigmentation at the corners of the mouth and people who have a deeper skin tone. A lot of that is just normal, you know, there's, it's not, it's not a problem. And like, there's really not much to, to quote unquote correct it because, I mean, it's not a problem. It's, it's part of like, the pigment cells, how they migrate around and, you know, end up lining up close to your mouth. But of course, like irritating skincare products, um, rashes around the mouth, eczema around the mouth. I get eczema breakouts around my mouth a lot. Um, that can lead to more inflammation that leads to hyperpigmentation and makes that, uh, those natural pigmentary demarcation lines, the extensions of those more obvious and, you know, controlling the inflammation is going to help out in that in that regard. Now, retinoids can help with hyperpigmentation because they suppress, you know, they they have an inhibitory effect on tyrosinase. Plus, they improve cell turnover, so they hasten, if you will, the clearance of pigment that is scattered throughout the epidermis. Kojic acid works because it chelates copper, which is necessary for tyrosinase. So, yes, it inhibits tyrosinase, but in a slightly different way. Azelaic acid also will inhibit tyrosinase. Products aimed at improving dark spots, they often have a combination of these ingredients. Soy isoflavones also help with hyperpigmentation. So, <clears throat> you know, serums and things that actually aim to improve, you know, they have a, a couple of different ing ingredients that tackle different arms of the pigment pathway, and that's what gives you a, a lightening effect. That's the lightening. It's different from brightening. Brightening is more along the lines of helping, it, helping improve dullness just bringing out the luminosity, the glow of your skin, and boosting your radiance. These are kind of marketing terms, but you know it when you see it. Um, your skin just looks healthier. Um, <clears throat> it, it's moisturized, it's smooth, it's glowy. That's what brightening products do. Lightening products actually will go in and address pigment pathways to, to tackle hyperpigmentation. You can have overlap in the ingredients for sure. Like I use a lot of things with niacinamide. It has a brightening effect because it's anti-inflammatory, it's moisturizing, and it also has some anti-redness properties to it. So I just find it really helps with overall skin clarity and skin tone. Um, but it also helps with hyperpigmentation again. Anyways, y'all, I hope this video was fun, entertaining. I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, 
sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.